Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Red Pill Tamales, where we talk about red pilling people, man. Like, I really want to talk about simulation theory, but right now we're talking about politics. Shout out to all the patrons, because this is a listener-funded podcast. That means we still have our freedom of speech, and we could talk shit and piss people off and trigger everybody and hopefully red pill you. I am Chingo Bling. We have Marisol. Hey, hey, hey. Producer I'm back. Rob in the house. What's up, everybody? My soul hadn't been here in a while. I know. Yeah. I've been busy. But she got a lot of DMs like, girl, when you gonna be back on the RPT? I like I how know. that acronym sounds good. RPT. I know, it sounds pretty cool, right? RPT. You down with RPT? Yeah, you know me. What's the what's the tamale stuffed with today? The what now? What? <laughs> what's the tamale stuffed with today? Oh, Meaning oh, what, what we, we stuffing it with? Yeah. I don't know. I do want to throw on. it out there today, guys, just because of that DM I sent y'all. Mm-hmm. I wonder how many listeners, right, out there, just because conservatives are very, very like, hell no to this. But Mm -hmm. so if your child, if your boy, not a female, if your boy came to you and said, I want to go watch Frozen, but I want to dress up like Elsa, gentlemen and ladies, Mm -hmm. would you guys say yes? Or would you be like, no? Or would you ask why? What made oh, you want to dress oh, up? Or will the dad dress up like Elsa and accompany the child who's also which dressed is what up? I, did which is exactly yeah, what the video the was. Video. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is what I got to say. I feel that chances are, how old was, how old was the child? I don't know. He might have been like six, four, five. five. Yeah. Four, five. Let's just he say, couldn't have been more than six. No. Nah. Let's say hypothetically, five-year-old. A five-year-old comes to you and says, Dad, I want to go see Frozen, but I want to dress up like Elsa. Chances are that the five years, those formative years leading up to that, I feel that the environment of the nurture may make it to where, well, duh, you've been encouraging this for five years, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, what was what percentage? You know what I'm saying? It's almost like if that happens, there's a good chance that it's been one of those where like, oh, we're just going to. You know, make them a little chonguito, ha, ha, ha. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, ponte los tacones, ha, ha, ha. And then when they're age five and they ask that. Yeah. I mean, I think that if the child comes up with that on their own, more power to you. Because that is innately, that is coming from a place from that, from the child. My only thing is, you know, um, it's like the nature versus nurture thing. Mm. It's like. Did the child naturally just want to do that? Yeah. Or have you been forcing it on and we're like, you sure you're not? You sure you don't want it? Like, uh, no, I'm good, dude. Yeah. I think that's where it's like, don't don't force them either way. The, the exact same well, thing. Well, you, you have a a, a bonus baby, a bonus son. Yeah. So what if your son, your bonus son came to you and said that he wanted to dress up like Elsa? Here's my thing. This is what I told myself immediately in the message. I was like, I would say, hey, it looks like Amazon's out of Elsa, but here's an Olaf costume. Let's roll, you know? Because, <laughs> so let me play devil's advocate, I guess, real quick. It's just to say, like Chingo said, is it nature versus nurture? If it just came out of them innately, then maybe that's something they want to do, right? But isn't it the parent's job to guide a decision or a, a, a kind of like a, not a decision, but a uh, just any kind of comment or statement a kid makes like that? If like they're three, four, five. They don't know what's guy, boy, girl, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But if they're like, oh, I want to dress up as Elsa, I was like, now nah, we're going to dress up as Olaf because that's, you know, whatever. And then then they start wrapping their brain around, oh, okay, I'm Kristoff or Olaf mm-hmm. is more like what we're going to go to the movies as with, you know, dad mm-hmm. and son, not fucking two Princess but, Elsas. But I think if a, if a little boy says, I want to go dress as Elsa, then maybe, that maybe there's a 50% chance that they innately, naturally, really desire to they maybe they feel you know what i'm saying maybe they yeah. feel feminine and they that's how they want to totally go see elsa you might be right that, that's or you know uh, here's gonna be this this is the lefty in me tell me, guys, tell me I, I, there's still some lefty uh, ways I mean, I left think, in I me think, i think everything i just said was empathetic and, sure, totally. and open-minded yes so let me just clarify before i hand over the mic <laughs> i was the close minded no, let, one yeah let me just clarify before i hand over the mic what i'm saying is the first part what i said is if a five-year-old says hey i want to go dressed as elsa maybe there's a percentage of you've been kind of steering and encouraging and just kind of being very like postmodernist. Sure. Like, oh, there are, there are no gender roles. What? Right. All those toys. Who says a Barbie isn't for boys? Who says G.I. Joe isn't for girls? Mm-hmm. Which is perfectly fine. True. If that's how they want, if that's what they want to do. So I'm not trying to be closed minded. All I'm saying is the clip that I saw. Yeah. The, it, I guess mm-hmm. it went viral. Is 
the dude, he was kind of virtue signaling with that video. He was like, you're not when going you're, yeah. alone. Mm. Uh, yeah, exactly. Dot, dot, dot. All right, bro, yeah. you look like a beta. He probably wanted to wear the Elsa dress. <laughs> it, it was a little bit of virtue signal, kind of <laughs> like, you know, but, but anyway. So for me, it's because you're a mom. You, you as a mom know when there's something fishy about your child. So if my why child, gotta be, <laughs> why I gotta be fishy? When, not I mean like fishy, like Prefer- that's weird. People have preferences, but you can tell if yeah. your child just kind of is playing more with girl toys, or you see that they're kind of more into like um, maybe your heels or your makeup, or you notice those yeah. things. Totally. I don't want to be like, no, that's girl stuff, but I do want to ask why you like this stuff why do you like this stuff versus this stuff Mm -hmm. and that would help me understand Mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. maybe at some you Mm -hmm. know maybe that's um maybe that's that sounds like good parenting because that way you can you can be mindful and sensitive or or informed as to where is this coming from yeah Mm -hmm. and you know or did you see it on tv because you know when they're watching YouTube, the, this, these videos continuously play. You know what I'm saying? So totally. it's one after the other, one after the other. So did you see maybe a boy on YouTube that was playing with girl toys and that's why you want to play with girl Or is this really just something that's within you that you've kind of like yeah. feel? It's really hard. And I know everybody says it's science, right? Um, but and as what, she rolls her eyes. What is science? That, you know what I'm saying, little boys can be born girls. Technically, all boys are girls first. Oh, you're talking about in the womb. In the womb. So y'all have vaginas first before hey. y'all get in so, the Hey, womb. some of these grown-ass men still got vaginas. Yeah, exactly. They have tampons. They there. got dookie streaks in their drawers. Well, so, where, where's that? Hey. There you go. Hey, this is episode 13. We're just getting warmed up. We're going to do a lot more sound effects. Again, shout out to all the patrons. This is listener-funded. Like... Y'all are Sky's making this the happen. Limit. Yeah. Sky For is, sure. We're getting so much feedback. Uh so many uh homeboy A Rod from uh, the Lexit movement hit me up. So we're supposed to be reaching out to him, see if we're gonna get on his show. And um sorry to just shift the conversation, but like, you know, again, shout out to Rocco from the Mayans and you know, Michael Berry and I, I got a whole bunch of new new friends yeah and shout out to goya if you want to be my friend too holla <laughs> dan crenshaw if you want to be my friend what's up wesley hunt you want to be my friend black rifle crew you know what i'm saying hey black rifle you want to be my friend they're being so, real friendly today i heard uh dan crenshaw is against guns though really somebody sent somebody us sent me something that was like that hey, was like hey you orale. might want to reconsider hey, him ponte trucha with ese vato. <laughs> orale, let's do some it, research it was like a scene from blood and blood out orale, ponte trucha con ese vato. so real quick guys just to finish the first yeah, because yeah. we're going sorry on. about that um so going back to that so i would kind of ask questions first right mm-hmm. why this or why that you know what i'm saying but i would never let them feel like they can't come to me because the last thing i want is a child that's emotionally unstable yeah. because parents were not um supportive and a, a lot of um i think um i'm not saying uh, let me not generalize but i think a lot of people who are homosexual or any other thing maybe they felt a, a, some kind of way inside and maybe parents were never there to kind of like uh explore those feelings or those emotions so they bottled them in and then it's like they're either like mm-hmm angry or you know they retaliate different ways totally. or, they, or they try to act act out you know what i'm saying because they feel a certain way and that's the last thing i want for my kids especially in La- in latino oh, culture yes yeah. latino because households. we're so against that you know what i'm saying and i think i think latino males who 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 are uh, gay right i think it's hardest for them because i think like again machismo is so big in our culture mm-hmm. it's like hell no you're not going to be gay right Another thing, though, that I didn't the what I didn't like was the caption. The caption was more like with so of many the video. Yes. It was like with so many genders. I'm and gonna, that's I'm where I, I disagree. I don't think there's a bunch of genders, but I think that you can identify with different so different things. The way I don't they, know if that makes sense. The way they framed it was was with the gender multi genders in mind. Yes. So Marisol was saying. Hey, it's cool that the guy, the dad was being supportive, right? Yeah, and sure. sensitive because he's already established that it's coming from a natural place and the child really feels that way. Um, it, the way it was framed mm-hmm. with the caption. See, framing, framing is very important. So it was framed in the context of with so many genders now. And I don't think, I personally don't think there's, there's two genders for me. And I'm, and I'm sorry if this offends anyone 
or if this goes against anything. But I agree there are bisexual people, hetero, you know, heterosexual. Yeah, but but that, uh, falls, that falls under preference. Right. And that's what I mean. I, I think there are you can feel or be or like anything you want. Right. But realistically, there's only two genders. There's only male and female, which is if you go back to it, which is why men who want to be women right it's still you either want to be a boy right. or a girl yeah who you identify with or who you like like that's a preference and that's a lifestyle or not, maybe not a lifestyle but like that is what you choose because that's, why, that's what you like that's why, in here that's you know why what I'm Caitlyn saying? Jenner is a lesbian I guess so huh he is a lesbian like, she is a lesbian I'm sorry to- she, that's what she says she is. She's a lesbian. Right, because still likes chicks. She still she still likes chicks, and but feels Elliot, like a female inside. Like Elliot, what's Elliot's name? Ellen pa- er, Elliot, Elliot Page, Page with, a, with a broad. Right. So now he's a right. he's that's a true, straight yeah. male. Yeah. So Elliot now Elliot, Page. Page. oh right, right, because straight because his wife congratulated him for coming out, right? Right. As a straight male. As a straight so now male. you so now you you add into the Western patriarchy. <laughs> you, be, you become you become a, a white straight male. That's true. So now you the oppressor. Oh shit, Jingle Bling just blew my mind right, man, right in front on, of me. Dog. I just don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's like Patreon. Holiday. I don't. Might as well if we don't know, you think they know? <laughs> and that's what I mean. It's like it's so such a sensitive subject, and it's like just let them be what they want to be. But just really, guys, really. You can only be born with two things unless you're you're a hermaphrodite. You know what I'm saying? Which is you've got both parts. And then even then, they suggest as doc for as doctors, you know, they suggest which are like being born a hermaphrodite is like <laughs> a hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite. Her- 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 I don't even know how you say it. Hermaphrodite. It's not like you say hermaphrodite. Like yeah. No, not hermaphrodite. <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? Even then, they suggest that you decide. <laughs> how, I don't you, even, how do you say it? How do you say Hermaphrodite. it? Hermaphrodite. 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 Oh, my gosh. That's a hard word. <laughs> oh, this is the clip. This is going to be the trailer for this episode. Hermaph. Hermaph. Hermaphrodite. Hermaph. Hermaphrodite. 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 <laughs> Hermaphrodite. So I've always been told it was called. Hermaphrodite. So, so anyway, so if, it's if, three genders. So that's Male, the only female, way. Hermaphrodite. Exactly. Be- and even then, when they're born that way, they they suggest to the parents that they wait until they're kind of fully developed for them to for you to see which way they like the hormones. The hormones. We talked about this, didn't we, on an episode? I feel like because that's no longer. I remember saying that's no longer the word. Hermaphrodite isn't what, the right the word. word. Oh, what's the word? Intersex. Intersex is a politically correct way of saying it. Of saying the same thing. Yeah, it's. I thought long. I thought intersex was on the sexual preference side, meaning it's like fluid, non-binary type shit. Persons with. Born with ambiguous or dual genitalia can also identify as intersex. Intersex is a more politically correct term to the term hermaphrodite. Well, you know how I feel about PC and politically correct. <laughs> once you already, well, we're over here tiptoeing once on you sensitive are, subjects. Well, once you already frame it that way, yeah, my my defenses go up totally because as a stand-up comedian, it all started with politically correct culture, and you know my crowd has always been. Oops, sorry. You know. They know what they're getting when they come to my show. Sure. You don't hear some ratchet shit. <laughs> you, you, there's no telling, you right? You see some twerking. You never know. I'm just saying. You have. <laughs> I'm just gonna say crazy stuff because that's stand-up comedy, and uh, so I'm already very like beware when yeah. I hear this is the politically correct. It's almost totally. like you're already telling us what you can't say and what you must think. Yeah, and that already leads to cancel culture. Yeah. So PC. Is what led to cancel culture. I would still say hermaphrodite because like, everybody knows what that is for the most part. If you say intersex, like what is that? Yeah, I don't yeah, know. It's, some new, it's a lot of new shit. And know? then, like for example, um, I actually know someone that's like that, and it's basically. Oh, they got she both. De- yeah, she developed breasts, so that's what she. But she knew she wanted. She's a girl. Does that make sense? Uh, did she? But she have they the... didn't remove it, so it's just like a little, a little nub. Oh, it didn't. It didn't develop. It didn't develop all the way, so it's just like a little nub, she just kind of chilling. Or it's kind of like the the clitoris. That's what I was gonna say. Got some hang time. I've like never it. seen it. I don't want to see it, but the clitoris got some hang I think time. I, I, it. It, <laughs> seriously, guys, this would have been, probably been me. Like, She's got a long clitoris. Wait, what? Damn. Oh, what okay, so what happened? Word. She's like, flicking it. Yeah, I'd be like touching it. That's oh, like, real bony. That's what, that's what's up. Do you ever, like, do you ever put it so in the other part? Can you pee from that <laughs> one? You know, can you pee from there too? Like, I'd be asking oh, yeah. all those stupid Where questions. Where does she pee from? 
I don't know. <gasps> I'm telling you, that's why I don't, I've never asked those questions. Wow. We'll do our research and we get need back to, have to that person on the show. Yeah, I'd be interested. So um, I triggered some people. I posted some clips from RPT mm. because I see that's where the comments and engagement is. <laughs> so literally, it'll be a beautiful picture of my family with the Grinch. How dare they not? 15 yeah. comments. Mm -mm. What's wrong with this algorithm? 15 comments. And then I post some shit about like AOC and Goya. It, it blows up. Or Black Rifle Coffee Company and it blows up. People are getting hung up on me saying that the Starbucks line with everyone wearing masks, masks outdoors, lining up, it looked like some communist shit. It's not one of the and same. And they're like, Django. "How dare you compare?" It's like, bitch, when you're telling stories, sometimes you try to use visual language. Yeah, like it looked like a communist bread line. Because I'm still a comedian. Just because exactly. the clubs are closed, 2021, we will see you. Uh, we're coming to Florida. We're coming to a lot of places. Mm -hmm. But y'all stay tuned. Uh, planning the tour last night at midnight. Dope. And <laughs> God, at midnight. hopefully I get to do a lot more podcasting so I don't necessarily have to be gone all the time and all that. Unless it's like, yo, we're doing a theater in Denver. It's lit. I feel yeah. like I'm seeing a lot of Florida fans. Like are being like the not the majority of, but a lot of them are the ones interacting. Like Homestead, I think. Oh, Homestead, I, but Homestead is where a lot of that's fans South of Miami, are, right, or something. Yeah. yeah. So my theory with that, what I'm curious is, are they because they're from a red state that's very open? Because their their governor is a uh, arguably more Republican than ours, yeah, right? Right. I wonder if that primed them to already be open minded about. Trump and the Republicans and conservative and all that type of shit. Or if they started looking at the left sideways, like, okay, y'all are doing a bunch of crazy shit over there. Some like weird shit from, I'm not going to say they, you know, did the Astros thing, but, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Cause we will fuck around, get kicked off. So I wonder, I wonder if we could find out maybe anytime you get somebody from Florida, just maybe pick their brain. Like you did a poll. What was the poll today? Yeah. Chingo had a really good question. We were talking about something that, that prompted him to say, uh, basically, were you more like right conservative leaning already? Were you uh, neutral or were you left when you kind of stumbled on the podcast? So I put his poll on, uh, the Patreon and overwhelmingly amount were already conservative, right leaning. Ah, okay. <clears throat> and I find that and I told Chingo, a lot of people that are Hispanic, Mexican, whatever, can't like just up and say I'm conservative like to their friends or family because it's just like, like Rob, never, Rob never told us we nah, did fuck no we did a whole bunch I, yeah, of I had, podcasts I had no idea yeah just, I just seen him hating on Bethel O'Rourke one time that was it it's just like I never told you guys I actually got married like you know I never told y'all we got married y'all got for real for married all this time just... you were like anti-marriage I wasn't anti-marriage I mean, yeah you were <laughs> also whenever I but told they, but they I living. even told you to get I even told you when, whenever you when you first came out Rob uh, whenever you first when we first started having this and we were like we didn't know you were that conservative because this whole thing about the way you view marriage is so mm. left sure yeah, so yeah that's why i was like what i you agree know? congratulations Shout out, yeah, congratulations uh, when did y'all get married actually we got married in november of last year oh it's about to be a year <laughs> yeah. what? It, just, it just was a year yeah. Yeah. so but y'all were so busy in november december of last year because you know we were still touring hardcore and all that jazz i just never brought it up it was one of those things like when I was here and when, when I'm here to work, I'm here to work. Like, we're working on projects. We're working on ideas. Man, you, you act like you ain't got my phone number, bro. I know. I know. But literally, she was like, well, should we tell them? Maybe they'll want to come. Because we just did a, like a Justice of the Peace kind of thing, right? And I was oh, like, nah, they're busy. They're going out of town tomorrow, whatever, whatever. And it just never came up to, after that. She would listen to this. She's going to be like, you finally fucking told them. She uh -huh. still doesn't know that I haven't told you guys. Damn. Ah! Here we are. Season two, episode 13. A year our, later. We over here, man, we done red pill so many people. I know. But no, Soul's right. Like, uh, I'm super left, like I said, with a, a bunch of, of things. And marriage is one of them. You know, kids is one of them. But, you know, you open up to those things as you get a family and decide to get married. I um, always knew that this. And also another thing that's so super duper conservative. I always told Pete, too. I said, I'm not having a baby unless I'm married. Really? It was just I had to be married. I just did not want to have. I didn't want to be together and just live together. Gotcha. So I legit told him, I said, um, if we're going to do this. No, she like, told me in, sp in Spanish. Ooh, tell, ah! me, tell me in Spanish. Como lo dijo en español? No. Dijo mi mamá que si no te casas conmigo. I started talking like that girl yeah. from Casa de las Flores. Yeah. Oh, sí, yeah. uh, no, I just have always felt that way. I felt like um, 
This is so. I know this is super duper old fashioned, guys. See, I don't need no nobody that's to tell me in that. You, in, yeah, like, I know. But and to know. me, it was the opposite. Hey, you, yeah, y'all ain't raza fool because y'all didn't vote for Biden. So <laughs> stop trying to be all. I'm traditional. I know that everybody is like, <laughs> you know, you don't have to be married. You can have your kids if you want and still be together with your partner. I know that. That's like everybody does. Like, that's normal, right? I know that that's normal. But in my brain, it was not normal to me. I didn't want to have, <clears throat> I wanted to have the same last name as my children. I wanted to be able to. Tra traditional. Yeah, that's sure. very tradi I guess that mm -hmm. was just the very traditional thing of, of, I didn't really care to have a wedding. I didn't need to have a wedding, but I needed to know that I was married before I had my child. See, there's a lot to unpack there because as an artist, Chingo, I would say, what was your initial thought to that? Because that's a I mean, pretty conservative I, perspective. I mean, I wanted to marry her. Um, but for her to say, we're not having kids, you know, until we get married. No, I mean, I, I already saw my life with her in a traditional fashion. Oh, it wasn't wow. like... Oh man, she finna, be my, she finna be my girlfriend and shit, you know what I'm saying? I'ma still do what I want, you know what I'm saying? She pregnant, but we cool. It's like we married. You know, I didn't really see that. I was just getting more, you know, mature. And so I had told him, I said, I don't want to have a baby and not be married. And I don't think and I've done said, anything else said, right. Period. Period. Per <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done it. It's not like I'm walking down the aisle in a white dress because I'm a virgin. You know what I'm saying? Totally. So there's like, I felt like my dad's in heaven. I would hope that there'd be one thing he'd be like, okay, she did one thing right. Jesus Christ. Thank God. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I just kind of Scoreboard. felt, yeah, exactly. It's like, damn, this girl ain't done nothing, nothing right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, she can't say hermaphrodite. <laughs> <laughs> she don't know how to say hermaphrodite. I still can't say it. Hermaphrodite. Hermerf hermaphrodite. Oh, her hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite. See, Rob there got that go. good in English. English yeah. Barreras. I still can't say it. Follow me. Yo, uh, I'm at the intersex. That's Mexi what I'm going to go with. Mexicans go. are trending Easy. on Twitter. I have no idea why. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. What? On Twitter is trending. It's just Mexicans. Wow. All right. While we talk about this, I'm going to look it up. Um, so, so We're what, trendy, y'all. We are very trendy, aren't we? We're the trendsetters. Yeah. Well, why, why would you say that was in, like, innate in you, though, like, to, be, to have that perspective on marriage? I mean, she grew up in the church. I, I grew up in the church. I grew up Pentecostal. I mean, you know, so church was God and doing things the right way was very, I mean, it's the same thing with us going to church. When I, I felt it in my heart, my baby was getting older and I just, I told Pete, I said, listen, you don't have to come to church with me, but I kind of grew up this way and I loved going to Sunday school. So I want for my babies to go to church. I was like, and I'm not Catholic. I said, but I also don't want them to be Pentecostal. And it's said, like, I'm not really that Catholic either. So I was like, and the the church that I was kind of going to on my own before was Second Baptist, was a Baptist church, period. Because where I worked out of, it was a deaf Baptist church. So where my office was out of, it's mm. the only I deaf love, Baptist I love, church. I love Second Baptist. So they got some big places around Houston, like yeah. big buildings. The one we go uh, there's to. There's one in Sugarland too, but I think yeah. they use like the, don't they use like the, um, arena or something. I think they rent a piece. Oh, of, really? I, or yeah, something like that. I there's could be wrong. There's one in Katy. Yeah, yeah they're, they're huge. huge. There's they six locations. In, they have some in Dallas. In Dallas, but the, the sun runs those. So um, let me tie it back into what you were talking to me about earlier, postmodernism. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll let you get back. Uh, 1111 podcast, which is under uh, Second Baptist, like go on Apple iTunes or whatever. Mm -hmm. They have a podcast. And Dr. Ben Young, on the 1111 podcast, he talks about critical theory. I think I mentioned this last episode. Oh, critical episode. race theory, yeah. Yeah, but I don't think he called it critical race theory. Okay. But he'll talk about postmodernism and uh, all these, like, shit you'll hear on Joe Rogan or yeah. Red Pill Tamales. Did they tie it into religion, or is it about those subjects particularly? No, it'll, they still, do, be, it'll still be a mainly a about that, but it'll actually still show you where it... That's why I told you, when this was all happening... Yeah. It was like deja vu for me growing up. We talked about this at church. That's what's crazy. Like, like when the world, you mean, this was you mean crazy when the world about the world. Crazy. Like, so that's why I told you they're the devil <laughs> because that's what we were taught at church. I they're the so devil. Loud. I so loud. And my soul sent me that, you know, I the was hypocrisy like, of yes. it all. And then my soul just replies, they're the well, devil. Yeah. No, honestly, think about it. Obviously there's no, I mean, the truth these days yeah. is very subjective. I, you know, it's a fucking weird world we're living in. But those that lie and just, you know, or just, I mean, think about it, man. If you believe in the Bible, yeah, 
it depends on how how you want to interpret it and how literal and verbatim you want to take it but in terms of like abortion you know there's a lot of stuff that's on the ballot and or it was on the ballot right shit's yeah. over but but you know how you know how conservatives are sometimes looked at like oh they're just bible thumper closed-minded totally. they're anti this anti that and um fuck my <laughs> does that does that mean yeah that well to me to... when it comes to the two-party system of like the religion like anti-religion religion anti-marriage marriage it's like yeah i i hear people say like the two-party system's broken it's like i get it i understand that there's a lot of flaws in both of them maybe maybe one day it'll be changed but not in our lifetimes like mm -hmm. let's just be real so you got to adapt to it right that's how you're supposed to be able to live with your neighbor who might be a fucking democrat but her you have yeah, or her murfordite <laughs> but you got a trump flag in your uh you know lawn like what you're supposed to be able to navigate through that without having it be the end of the day well there's never i I mean, I haven't heard of any Biden supporter that got canceled or boycotted or no, nah, they're the ones doing yeah, they're the, the ones canceling. Yeah. So like, I haven't heard of any Biden supporters getting ostracized. Or if a family member comes out as a Biden supporter, does anyone shun them? Like, well, fuck you, you fucking Biden supporter. It'd be like, no, that's. I, I love you totally yeah, cool. That's cool you have every right i don't care that's the weird argument in shingo's comments where people that are like so like how dare you turn your back because biden isn't bitch shingo say yeah because the white guy from delaware is for the rasa right he's mm -hmm. like yeah they'll be like they'll just agree with like yeah exactly he is like all right you haven't seen we the tiktoks that we, we were seeing earlier which one the one the ones you sent of like the old c-span videos of oh, biden from man. the 70s he's using the n-word and all kind of stuff Bruh. you know but it never got leaked that never devil, came out see Los diablos. Just, and, and you know i guess i was trying to explain how like the thing about the devil mm -hmm. it's like it's a lot of evil man like anytime you're doing propaganda on people and you're just you're just manipulating and and that type of shit that's pretty devilish i would agree yeah yeah i'm gonna yeah, agree yeah. i'm gonna yeah. agree too uh just because like i said when all this was happening i'm telling and i think I, t I said this once already on the podcast that yeah. i had literally just told pete that i was like man i feel like i'm this watching the movie from church all over again because it would show movies like that this things were start to happen in mm -hmm. the world and i just thought when because you got to remember growing up super duper religious we're talking about my dad was the co-pastor of the church that's intense co-pastor my mom was the secretary of the church my mom was a Sunday school teacher. So you, you was in the church. I was in the, the church time. all the time. So when you force a child so much in the church, you kind of like rebel and you're like, I do oh. not want to be a part of that. Like, stop making me do this. You know what I'm saying? Like it should be. Um, my parents were criticized though at church because they didn't force me to get baptized. They kind of felt like, at that age, it's in your heart and you need to, if you want to dedicate your life to God, it needs to be up to you. Not because I'm telling you, you better go baptize yourself. What you, age? What age? Um, when we had, when I had my quinceanera, right. It, it was like, kind of like the talk was that I still hadn't been baptized. You know what I'm saying? At the, you know, because that was like the topic, that was, the that was like the thing. And my dad was just kind of like, I'm not doing it. Like, I'm not forcing my child to do it. It's got to come from in here. That's crazy that they even mentioned it to where your dad had to defend himself. Yeah, it was kind of like, well, <laughs> yeah, is she going to get baptized kind of like before she has... Like, hey, Rob, let me holler at you, man. Uh, I see the way you're raising your kids, bro. Yeah, yeah. basically. It's like, what? You don't approve? Um, so, you know, it was kind of one of those things where I just kind of felt like... And, and that, that was it, though. Crazy thing, though, man. When you're raised this way you feel like something's missing in life. And when my, when I, we left the church, right? Because my parents divorced, which is a huge sin in our religion, like ginormous, right? When I left, it was weird as a, as an adult. I myself, when I was, was able to drive, my parents gave me their, the car. It was like, Oh, I'm going to go to church. My mom's like, you're going to go to church. I'm like, yeah. And she's like, Oh, okay. Because I felt like it was like brushing my teeth. So like really? missing church on Sunday was so weird to me because mm. it was like, now I'm going to go to hell because I'm not going to church. You know what I'm saying? And it was, it was just, that was like the thought, you know? And then I didn't go for a very long time. And then my aunts uh, started attending second Baptist and Katie. And I was like, God, I'm so embarrassed to admit this, but I low key, am not going to understand 
anything they're going to say because I grew up learning the Bible in Spanish. So my Bible is half Spanish, half English. So I'll find the scripture first in English and I'll let the church, like the pastor read it. And then it's like, I'll read it in Spanish. I'm like, got it. Hmm. Crazy thing though. I probably couldn't go to school in all Spanish, if that makes sense. But this religion for me, it makes more sense in Spanish. I don't know if it's the vocabulary or the way it's expressed or the way it's taught. I really don't know. Um, but at Second Baptist, it was the 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 deaf Baptist church. Mm-hmm. When I went in, okay, mind you, now now sign language is not my first language. Spanish is right. Right. So now this is a language that I learned. However, when I attended the deaf Baptist church the pastor signing the entire entire sermon and I understood everything clearly. Was that not freaky? That's crazy. Because I thought that was weird being that it's harder for me to understand certain things in in English, but this whole new language that I know, Mm -hmm. it was clear as daylight. And it was like, what? And so it was like, it kind of just became... It's probably, uh, trying to get scientific, there's probably like the part of your brain that, that handles that linguistic... You know, maybe the mm-hmm. Spanish, because it was like your first language, somehow is near that part of your brain that handles your, mm. your yeah, uh, sign language. Da, 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 da. <laughs> but I just liked it because they weren't all up in your mix yeah. at Second Bap. It was like it's such a big church. You go in and you go out. No one knows if you farted, if your <laughs> marriage is man, crappy. They're you not know in your saying? mix. That, uh, that Second Baptist, man, it's dope. Yeah. They got a... They gotta, First of all, they have a school there. They got a big old giant Christmas tree right now, a bunch of stuff for the kids. They have a coffee shop. Coffee shop is so good. It, mind you, it's um, open. A gym. And it's open all the time. And they have a gym there. Isn't it arguable that a community church like is, is, is more desirable to some people? Because like, let's just say, let's use tithing, for example. If you tithe in a small church, you can repair somebody's house if they need, or mm-hmm. you can do something like that in the community. Whereas you, when you give to a bigger, more corporate conglomerate mm-hmm. kind of uh, establishment, you don't really know where the money goes. Mm-hmm. I've heard a lot of people argue that. That's true. Uh, w- when you do tithe at, at Second Baptist, I mean, I'm not saying it is true, but they do tell you, like, where would you like your money to go to? So the children's ministry, the singles ministry, um, oh, donate okay. to children, like donate, because they do a lot of giving back. Yeah. So obviously they also have to do that because of all the money that comes in. I'm sure there's got to be something that they're... And then, and then factor in <clears throat> all the people that get to attend and take advantage and don't tithe. Right. Attend, take mm-hmm. advantage... And don't, what, what is the other one? Instead of tithe, when you just give that day? Uh, just give. Offering. offering. Offering, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't do offering. Mm-hmm. And y'all go to church all the time. Huh? huh? <laughs> and y'all go to church all the time. I couldn't think of the word either, offering. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know where to put it right now. They leave you the little envelopes. <laughs> Usually, if there's someone that walks around like, and okay, you kind well of put they, it. Well, they didn't come to us. So yeah. I guess we just. I guess we just keep we it. sit at the next very time. top because my next child next time. does not stay in the daycare. So she won't stay. So yeah. we sit in an area. I don't like being in the, the one that they make for children where it's like closed in with this glass. I hate being in that one. So right now, because it's not totally packed, we're able to go to the very top and have our own little row. And so I bring like coloring books for Penny, her little magnets. Uh, oh, the music is great. Yeah, the music is great. You, you guys should come with us one day just to try it out. You know I'm, what I'm saying? <clears throat> okay. They got some A1 musicians. I mean, electric guitar. Bam, and dudes be singing their heart out up there, and they're just like, man, y'all, some of these people need record deals. Like, <laughs> yeah, because they're good. They're they good. probably do tour. They probably are like just traveling musicians with bands. Mm-hmm. Let me put this out there then, since we're talking about religion. Because when you think of conservatives, you do think about you know marriage and pro-life, and you think about religion. How many people do you think, let's just say within this election cycle, that have shifted their thoughts and let's just say got a little red pill, mm-hmm. saw a little bit of the unspoken truths, and then mm-hmm. came over to the conservative side, but then also said, I'm really not down with church. I'm still kind of liberal with my, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. gender mm-hmm. ideas mm-hmm. and stuff. You think that's pretty, probably a big possibility, yeah. right? A ton oh, of people sure. did that. Because he, like maybe I, even I, listeners also. I, yeah, I, because I feel like I feel a certain kind of way about abortion. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel that, and this is again, the, the other side of me is, and, and I don't feel like it's okay to abort up to five months. God, your baby's pretty much all done. Like, you know mm. what I'm saying? The the next couple of months, the baby's, you know, just kind of getting stronger yeah. and the nail beds are getting better. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they got a heartbeat early. Right now. I mean. I, yeah, yeah. Right. You know, early it's on. just like, yeah, early on you can hear. Today. The, you know? <laughs> 
So, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like one of those things where it's like, when? When is it okay, right? right. And I don't know that there's an okay. Maybe but I just feel like if you were raped and yeah. and you're and and you mm. get pregnant because of that situation, I can't imagine what that does to you mentally and I can't imagine if you end up having that child what it does to you. Do you give it up for adoption? Do and, you keep it? Is and, that going to be the memory of what happened to you? Yeah, Do you see what I'm saying? That's a big what if hypothetical because I'd argue there's a been endless amount of cases of someone and I'm not I'm not trying to be like what's the word talk nice about rape please yeah. don't misinterpret that hang no. on a second um what I'm saying is how many cases were there where somebody conceived a child and loved them unconditionally regardless of how conception sure, it's happened. very possible yeah and I'm sure that's happened yeah oh, okay. I'm sure it's okay. very possible but I just you know, I just think that a female should be their choice. Like you probably should have taken better care of yourself. If you accidentally got pregnant and mm -hmm. you really didn't want to have a child and with then, this person. What but about this plan B? Does is, you know, I'm mean, plan B pills. Mm -hmm. They pop in like, like it's Skittles. <laughs> and then, you know, birth control too. Cause that's also, I think that's against Catholic religion. Is yeah. That, any kind of contraception. Yeah. Well, it's dangerous. It is dangerous too for females. It, it, they don't tell us that. And I, and, uh, I don't know if I told you, but I didn't know either, to be honest with you. I was kind of dumb about side it. Side effects. And the side effects are crazy. It wasn't until my when my mom had breast cancer, um, there's like little courses you can sit through while they're getting chemo. Mm -hmm. And so I went and sat in this little workshop that talked about cervical cancer, right? Which I don't really know why I sat in it. It just only scares the shit out of you, right? And But it was talking about birth control because what birth control, birth control does is it psychs your body to think it's pregnant. So your hormones are kind of going everywhere. That's why certain birth controls are not for everyone. You know what I'm saying? Especially the ones that don't bring your period at all. It's like, it's not normal. You've got to let your body do those things. That's yeah. normal, you know? So I didn't know any of that. And then it was like, okay, so what do you do? Yeah. Yeah, anytime you're messing with hormones. It's like, it's you know what I'm saying? So it's like a lot of stuff. You know, it's like a lot of things you got to think about. It's like, damn. I just think those things are a choice that a female needs to make, not a man, not a male. And and I feel like if it is a sin or if it is wrong, that's going to be between you and God to figure yeah, out. Yeah, I like agree. He's going to have to, you know. So even if you're pro-abortion, please don't. I mean, I, I know a lot of y'all did vote for Biden already. But don't think Biden's the truth. <laughs> no, yeah, of course. Yeah, far from it. So regardless of, for example, stimulus checks. Okay, well, that's a form of socialism, but it's okay. Like, we need it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? The, the American people need it right now. Nancy Pelosi over there tripping. But um, <sighs> this shit runs out next week, everybody. The what CARES, runs out? The CARES Act. So all the mortgage forbearance, all of the, you know, can't pay a rent. You can just push it off. All of the, uh, any kind of stimulus that was going out for unemployment for gig workers. I thought they were going to try to do another stimulus. They've what been trying happened? to do that since May. They've been going back and forth. Yeah. These little Congress people, they're getting paid and shit. Y'all, I wish, I just wish. So I heard a, uh, um, a doctor on Candace Owens. I think she was the Dr. Estella. I forget what her last name is. I think she was the only one that came out and said that the, uh, what is it? The, what is the medication that they say would work? Is it malaria? Hydroxychloroquine? No. Yeah. So it, it, but it cures malaria, right? Yeah, it's or a malaria like, medicine. Okay. So she says in Africa, it's totally normal. Like it's like almost go get it over the counter, uh -huh. but they took it off. Like it's almost like Advil. You have it in your house just in case. Took it yep. off the counter. They've even taken it off the counter, like in Europe and mm -hmm. in Africa because. Be why? Because. Give the vaccines. Yes. So. India was nice enough to send a bunch of it to us because they make it because they make it. Mm. But they didn't want for doctors to distribute it. So she came out and and basically said like this works. She went viral. They took her video down a gazillion times off of Facebook. They took it down off of YouTube. They she posts it back up. It comes down. It goes back up. She's it's a constant fight and she's religious you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying and she said that was it the nigerian doctor yes oh she's a lady that probably trump put on um the one from houston yes and oh yeah yeah well that yes. was super controversial it was they, they discredited her because of her religious yeah stuff. And, yeah and her i don't know i didn't really dig into it but like she has a practice in like a fucking shopping center or something and people were roasting her yeah exactly but she 
you know, so she gets, she's, she's on Candace Owens and she kind of like just talks about it and you're like, they're not wanting for doctors to talk about ways to cure this. And yet, you know what I'm saying? Like, is that not a sign to you guys that well, something is being controlled here? Well, At this tech- point, we have to put this behind a paywall now because we're talking about vaccines and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's just another example. If you guys have been tuning in episode after episode, how often does it come up that big tech has plays a, a, an interesting role in today's society mm-hmm. where we go to them for answers. We go to their, we go on there to search and, you know, discovery and you, you, you assuming Google is going to give you the right answer on the first page, but it just depends. Right. Or you assume that you would be able to, if you're a doctor, you'd be able to tweet something like, Hey guys, vitamin C has shown that you can't say it's you use the wrong language. You made it sound like it's a cure. Okay. Uh, in my cases, I've seen good results. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, that's really the biggest story right now is the role that, you know, social media and big tech and how really they influence the uh, E-L-E-C-T-I-O-N. You know mm-hmm. what I'm talking about? Because mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. want to get ding, ding, ding. <laughs> um, because people were already primed as to what stories they hid, what they promoted, what they allowed to trend, what they didn't, who they suppressed, who they uh, fact check, canceled your account, uh, put you in Twitter jail. And it was all people from it's all people from the left that work up there that have these, you know, are able to move the lever, the levers and push the buttons. Mm-hmm. And it was all people from the right that were the ones being suppressed. So and also um, going back to the vaccine thing, I think I told you, Rob, I was I was getting my nails done and I look up and I start to read the the captions. And it says that if you are on food stamps in order for you to continue to receive did mention that to receive food stamps this was on the news on 11 Mm -hmm. on channel 11 cage you yeah uh they said if if you want to continue to get your food stamps you're going to have to you're going to have to show proof of vaccination Mm. well which is scary yeah i i I, you did send that i meant to look into it because what's the what's the logic behind that or what's the idea and okay you know they're going to get all the people who are on government assistance yeah to to be forced to get this for sure well i would say because that's what mm -hmm. we that's what they do Mm -hmm. the people that are in the system they just you know i think the argument is we're never going to get this thing under control unless we get enough people in the united states to, to get it and enough people in other countries to get it because even if even if we only focus on vaccinating uh americans you got folks from other countries that are going to come in non-vaccinated and that's how measles was starting to come back up. So right. they're saying, okay, to answer mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. in order for you to start traveling, this is what they want to do because they want to yeah. have every American vaccinated by July, yeah. July. Every this is, American. this is seven months cause we're in December already. So that means there's seven months, every American. So, if you're a business person who probably travels back and forth, That's you will have to rule? show. Yes, oh. you will have to show your card saying that you've been vaccinated. Otherwise, you will not be allowed to travel. And I remember thinking, well, it looks like we're driving everywhere. Mm. Uh huh. So that's how they're going to want to get you. This was on the news, guys. So don't believe me. Please fact check me, too. Because, mm. like, again, I was sitting there getting my nails done. And I was like, lady, mm. hurry up and p- finish polishing my nails because I need to text my guys right now. We need to look this up because... I couldn't believe I said, this is unreal. It's happening. It's happening. They're going to find a way to force people. Funny thing. Mm -hmm. I was uh, just chit chatting with my midwife the other day. And I said, you heard about them wanting to give us all the, she said, fuck them. And I was like, whoa. I was like, she's (laughs) like, they're not coming to my mother. I mean, I rarely have ever heard my midwife cuss. And she was like, these motherfuckers ain't coming in my house. And she's like all mad about it. I was like, which is weird because I don't know which way she votes. Um, but we know she's pretty much anti-vax. For but the she's most part. very anti-vax. So she, cause she didn't vaccinate her children at all. But she None also, of them. but she also went to uh, like Ivy league school and all yeah. that. Brown. Yeah. She went to Brown. Ivy yeah. league. Mm. So, so she, she, ain't, does, she ain't no dummy. Yeah. She's, she's super smart. Especially yeah. when it comes to the female body and delivering mm-hmm. babies. Cause well, I told you, she was the one that told me um, 
that these my uh, basically my results of my blood tests were normal, mm -hmm. but they base you on a, ca a Caucasian body. So based on that, they'll put you on medication, not oh, right. based on they don't compare you to another Latina. They they compare you to the <clears throat> the the, right, the white yeah. race. So that's kind of how they. And that's why we need to have an expert because this is interesting shit because, I mean, we can't deny that like vaccines are the reason we're still here in 2020, right? Cured smallpox, cu mm -hmm. cured a lot of things in the past. Like, sure. Our parents have scars from the, yes. from the smallpox vaccine. Poli polio. Yeah, polio because it left a scar, right? Measles. Measles. Um, but yet here we are and it's unfortunate that everyone's so skeptical. And I'm there too because, for instance, we're young, right? For the most part, we're like, we're not... We are young. We're mm -hmm. not 60 plus. We don't mm -hmm. have underlying conditions. Mm -hmm. We should question, should we take this? Mm -hmm. Like, is it like necessary that we do it when we have a non-compromised immune system? Like, yeah. nah, we'll just wait. Yeah, from the, from the side of risk management. Yeah. Like, like when people ask me, Chingo, you going to be the first one to line up? And I, that's usually my answer. It's like, well, I'm 41. No other health issues that I know of, thank God. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not, in, I'm, I'm in no hurry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not lining up. I'm not getting it. You yeah. developed this they vaccine. They say it hurts. They say it hurts, and you got to take multiple. So that doesn't give people a ton of incentive. Yeah. Even though you are having the people that, like, the first ones that got the vaccine, I think in New York or whatever it was, that they're like, yeah, I feel great, feel normal, feel like my regular influenza shot every year. Like, they said, right. they said Biden was was talking about getting it on camera to get to so that everyone feels good about it. But it's kind of like Biden. Hey, bro, you seventy eight, dog. Maybe that's the plan to get you know get the real president in there. Oh, no, bro. Oh, but guess <laughs> he, he you cleared know what his I, throat a lot on that. Speech. He did, yeah, and he said he had a cold. The uh, the but unnecessary you, speech. But if you're social distancing and you're wearing a mask, does that mean that Joe Biden had a cold? Because where else you getting colds from if you've been in the basement and you've been social distancing and you've been wearing that mask religiously, that's why you're going to make it a 100-day mandate. So how are you catching colds if you're not around nobody? Puro pelo. And then here's another thing on one of them little conservative accounts I follow because mm. I'd be reading them comments. And um, one person said, so has Kamala quit her current job? Yeah, I see a lot of people say she hasn't given up her Senate seat she hasn't yet. Ha she has not. Mm. Uh, and, you know, everyone's like, because she knows that, you know, she can't give it up because they're not really not going to win, which, again, hey, I am I leave every door open to possibility, yeah. right? Um, and they, they use other examples of past senators that, like, gave their seats up way in advance, you know, Biden being one of them. He gave it up way in advance when he became vice president or whatever. Uh, but there are, like, one or two examples of somebody that gave it up, like, two or three days before inauguration. Like, all right, I guess. I mean, you could, but it's un it's it's really rare that people wait that long to give up their senator seat. I don't know. Like she has? Like she has. Mm -hmm. like, they, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're like, she. does no one see it? I'm still confused about how all that works. I get what you were telling me. I guess I'm just kind of losing hope, and I know everybody's going to be pissed at me right now for saying <laughs> A lot that. of people are losing hope. I, I understand. I just feel like, oh, my God, this is just getting out of hand. Can, can we just stop and just, why can't we just be truthful to the people of America? Why? Well, why is it do we have to make it that complicated for the for the united states because or like it's naive it's almost like it's bitches naive. that like drama in their life yeah you know yeah. what i'm saying who can't live without it that's how i feel these <laughs> that's our government yes. yeah that is our government well, look, for sure the system is set up to where the media is allowed to do what they're doing they're allowed to you know this is baseless there is no evidence it's like bro there's evidence <laughs> whether it's true or not there is evidence and yeah. you can't just say there's no evidence you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like yeah like when biden gave his his other his second uh victory speech like he gave one after the media called him you know president-elect and then the electoral college casted their votes he gave another one last night which completely was unnecessary like just but i heard that Nevada still hasn't verified what that's where I'm confused about. Yeah. So what happens? So there are like so on January 6th real quick. So this is episode 13. Uh, Y'all are going out of town. So we're mm -hmm. kind of recording this one like in advance in mm -hmm. advance. But it's still it's going to be way before January 6th that people get this. So on the 6th, the president, the vice president, rather, he certifies and counts those electoral votes. So everybody that voted yesterday from every state. All they did was give the electoral votes that, that we already saw on the maps were going to go to whatever president, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes, okay, Biden got the unanimous 306 or whatever, like we saw was going to happen. That's part of the process. But everything that's being contested and everything that's still kind of in litigation uh, it is still a thing until Inauguration Day. So on the 6th, Mike Pence, here's what everybody's hoping the Hail Mary passes. 
January 6th comes, Mike Pence decides to just not read these electoral votes. I will not certify these in the, you know, in, you know, in, in Biden's victory. Uh, I think me and Trump won. We're going to take this to the Supreme Court. That could happen. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what everybody's hoping will happen. So why wouldn't he want that to happen? Because he wants to play ball. He wants everybody wants to stay in the role. That's kind of it would be career suicide almost if they for just, him for him and any Republican why? that backs him. Because, I mean, you still have to go through the legal battle of having the Supreme Court hear it and find that what they uh, what they present is enough to overturn an entire election and even want to take the role of possibly disenfranchising voters. Yeah, they don't want to have to overturn an election. But check this out. Those electoral votes in each state, right? In essence, they're just counting whatever the bullshit result was. Yeah. So let's just say there was cheating and fraud and and a har- a ballot harvesting and underage people voting, dead, dead people, people voting, yeah. um, fucked up software, all that type of shit. So you already had a fucked up process, so you're going to get a bullshit result. And that's those are the votes they're turning in? Like... I here in mm-hmm. with uh, you know Nevada ha- have these votes here because all these counties turned in their bullshit results. Mm-hmm. So now I'm going to turn over these bullshit votes, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah, yeah, that's what. But that's the also, um, I was watching this thing where it says Biden cannot win even if he has 264. 260. It has to be, it has to be, it has to be two, exactly 27. Mm-hmm. So even if he's 269, no. he didn't win. Right. Which I think right now he's not even at that. So I, why are they saying that he did? Is it? Is he I, well, I mean, according to the media, he's at 306. So oh, they're, mother. yeah, they're giving him. And the, the irony is that that was what Trump got, I think, in 2016. He got 306 and Hillary got whatever Trump has right now. So that's what he said that at the end of his speech. So he goes in Trump's own words. This is the slant, the landslide victory that I have now. Again, it's like it's just part of that narrative to keep pushing that he's won. He won. And he didn't even have to campaign. OK, yeah. so let's just <laughs> let's just. OK hypothetically mm-hmm. he won right mm-hmm. because he's they keep announcing how he's assigned so and so to this job right. this job this cabinet, okay yeah. he loses uh-huh. what happens it's to a, all those people he nothing. elected he, he's in the basement still he yeah. ain't in the white house yeah those people those people are just like projected potential it's just, that's just a so text. they don't have a job yet no, no that's no, no. a text that's just yeah. who he's that's yeah. just who he's picked yeah that's hey bro you're not gonna be my uh head of homeland security my yeah. fault my bad. Sand. <laughs> <laughs> hey bro you're not gonna be my attorney general after yeah. all Sand. so uh, so what basically happens fault. if either president gets 270 then you have what, what's considered a contingent election in which case every state gets one vote that's it so there's 50 states there's more republican states than there is democrat states so it would go it would be a contingent election through the supreme court that would decide the winner mm. so the votes don't even matter at that point it's if like, enough proof can be brought to overturn or throw out states more than that's like in layman's terms we're gonna throw out michigan pennsylvania that, all that shit that would be amazing for many reasons number one it'd be amazing because despite all the meddling that the mainstream media has done all the hoaxes and all that type of shit that it still went the correct way so in other words if more people voted for trump then that should be well not more people right because obviously it's the electoral amount. yes yeah. the accurate amount which led to more electoral votes mm-hmm. and vice versa if biden really had more people just saying but but here's the thing though I'd argue that a lot of people that voted for Biden did so because they believe the fake hoaxes that the media perpetuate. Yeah, that's a great argument. Because they think that Antifa's good, Proud Boys are bad. Mm-hmm. You know, or whatever. I'm not here to defend Proud Boys, but like I, from what I've seen, I've seen them out there crunk, ready yeah. for some Antifa people to fuck around, but they're not destroying businesses. It's Antifa looking like anarchists. Yeah, it- all the media is talking about and all that like even Ben Shapiro is talking about is what the process is. Like we know the election there, the media says what they say. They have the electoral college vote. All that. This is just part of the process. The process hasn't been disrupted yet. Like it's going to the days are going to take place the way they take place. And then at the very end, there's still a possibility for something to transpire. Mm-hmm. So so real quick, just so that I'm clear. January 6th, mm-hmm. right, is that's it. That's going to be the deciding day. And whatever happens that day moving forward is who we who our president is technically the only day that matters is january 20th when somebody's hand is on that bible and they're sworn into office so after pence either decides or decides not to count those electoral votes on the sixth there still could be litigation 
that overturns this. But that's kind of more than likely not going to happen. Like that's he's either going to call these fucking votes for Biden or he's not. And if he doesn't, then there's a lot of litigation. Hey, Bi- so, Biden's so, going to put his hand on the Bible and then Kamala sneaks hers under. <laughs> and goes, I got this player. I still don't understand. I still, I guess what I am confused as to why he wouldn't want to dispute them and let well, Why would he let Bi- want Biden well, to win? Well, he gave Rob gave one reason. Another reason could be this. So myself. Democrats wouldn't. I mean, I'm sorry, Republicans wouldn't back him up, being that that's it. I mean, there's a ton of Republicans that don't like Trump. Like mm-hmm. they're anti-Trump. Yeah, like Trump really wasn't your traditional Republican. No, mm-hmm. he was kind of calling out everybody's bullshit, saying uh, America's losing because these politicians suck. Yeah, and like, they're not doing a good job. And it's true though. It's very true. Okay, again, man, I, I uh, another podcast I was listening to yesterday with Adam Carolla. Love Adam. Oh uh, yeah, he he's so real, man. I, man, sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish I could just tell people the way he does. <laughs> Like you do, no you do it right here. So um, one thing that he said is it's true. What? Come on, people, think about it. If you are a business owner, you know how business works. Politicians do not. They don't know what it is like to run a restaurant. They just want to get reelected. They just want exactly yeah. their uh, their politicians. Th- that's their career politicians. That's what they yeah. are. They don't know they the don't restaurants. Know. Restaurants might be sitting on ten to fifteen thousand dollars worth of spoiled, like food that might spoil. Again, again. Mm-hmm. And and it's kind of like one of those things, like when they want to force these small businesses to to up the the uh, minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour. <sighs> yeah. I mean, okay, so up it. That just means that that person's probably not going to be able to give them forty hours a week, yeah, or hire or hire or as many hire. people, right? Exactly. So somebody's going to have to get let go because they can't afford it. A lot yeah. of small businesses can't afford that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, unless you're a business owner, you don't really understand. Also, you also, as a business owner, like feel guilty when you know you can't provide jobs for the people that work for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know. I'm not saying that our comedians depend on us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that I had to text people and tell them like, hey, so uh, this show's canceled. Yeah. Hey, um, so we're not having this show. So I was high the other day. Sure. And I was thinking to myself, could or, or how many of these countries are using super advanced AI that, are telling the leaders of that country, let's just say C-H-I-N-A, they got some AI, right? And it's basically telling them what moves to make and what, it's like a chess. You know how it was always like a Russian versus a computer playing chess and stuff like that, and that was a way to measure the advancements of computing power? Imagine they got some AI that's basically telling them, all right, dog, look, I've calculated all the moves you need to do. You know what I'm saying? You need to go... uh, Basically, y'all need to take out small businesses in yeah. this country to destabilize. You know what I'm saying? Good to, as weed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because, no, because think about it. As I've been saying, I'm obsessed with, like, that sci-fi tech, like, okay, artificial intelligence. Like, we're we're educating the algorithm. Every little button we push, everything mm. we look at, everything we type, all that is just telling everywhere we go. How long you look at it. It's just educating it. It's feeding it data. Mm-hmm. That it's taking and processing for whatever they they desire. So if you're in this, uh, it used to be nu- like a nuclear war race. It used to be an arms race. Right. Like who's gonna have the biggest rockets, biggest missiles? Now is who could hack better? Who could fuck over somebody else's elections? Who could get influence in their media and and their press? And you know who? What what president could we put in that country? How do we? America does it all the time. You know, they go to these uh, South America or different little countries. They figure out how to destabilize some shit, how to take out one regime, put in the other, just regime change. And they apply pressure and they blow shit up and and so on. But let's discuss that. Do you think there's a chance that, let's just say Mm C-H-I-N-A, got some AI that's telling it, like, here's the play. We got to put some troops over here in Canada. We got to buy up this big old ranch in Texas near that Air Force base. Did when they really buy a ranch here in Texas? I don't know. Is that I just, true? I don't know. Yeah. But, look it up. But, but think about it. Shit, man. On the last episode, so I don't know if you are a loyal listener, <laughs> but on the last episode, we we talked about a data leak that showed that 
C H I N A mm-hmm. has two million people spread out all over the world in different countries that answer to their government. Mm-hmm. Basically, what's the info? What's the update? What you working on? That company you work at? What they working on? Mm-hmm. And so on and so forth. That could be part of this overall long game strategy because their president is in for life. Yeah, it's not they not up for reelection two years, four years. So he's no. basically sitting there saying, I bet how we finna take over everything. Oh, our boys about to get in. Word. They're in they're in bet. Zimbabwe. They're in Africa. They're uh, along the U.S. Mexico border. Fencing all with the cartel. This is a good podcast. This is RPT. So if y'all listen, y'all already up on game. Like, oh, yeah, that was episode four, player. <laughs> That's true. That's what, uh, I was listening. In case you didn't see, I text Rob she did. to ask if this episode was the flap episode went up twice. But yeah. I think I did. So I don't And then she told twice. me my voice was sexy. So I know hey. she was listening. Thank you. Hey. See? And then she said, um, Hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite. <laughs> this is Hermaphrodite. Oh my God! Episode. Everybody's gonna. No one's gonna let me live that down. Now. That's what we Hermaphrodite. call full circle, everybody. <laughs> that's how you. That's how you do a callback. Hermaphrodite. Uh, well, shit, guys. You guys are. Lo- you guys are going out of town, right? Tomorrow. Mm-hmm. We yeah. are going to Boston. Yeah. So my sister called me today and said, "All right, so I just want to prepare you guys, because y'all have never been in snow. I've been. I mean, in we have a snow." But there's a blizzard that may be hit. She's like, I've so been we in may be stuck inside the house. He was like, speak for yourself, yeah. so my first, I mean, I haven't. My first year in New Jersey was a blizzard. It was the worst blizzard they had in a decade. Wow. Damn. And uh, they did state of emergency in New Jersey. And uh, I didn't go to school a lot in that winter. <laughs> <laughs> we were snowed out. Hey, you were online learning like all these damn children. I know. We were Guys, playing- I, was, I was thinking about that the other day. And I was like. I would love to see like little first graders, like elementary kids, right? Not not so much junior high and high school, but por, porque ya kind of at that time you're either good or you're not. Mm. I, I think the crucial years, to be honest with you, are elementary school. The formative. The, that's years. where the where you're being for like kind of molded and you know. That's why saying? you do pledge of allegiance. So um, anyway, I was uh, thinking about that because I was like, I wonder how many kids are going to fail this year. You just thought that to yourself? I just thought that to myself because I was just thinking about um, they're about to go on Christmas break. They yeah. already missed all these days of school already. I'm thinking the opposite. I'm like, how many people are they just going to push through? That That's where mm-hmm. my head went. Well, either way, who loses? The children. The kids yeah. and, the Sharon, Ameri- the and America. Sharon. Yeah. Which is, which is also part. If you're in another country and you want to destabilize and you want to get a hand up, you want to get an edge on them. What better than having a poor educational school? Your, your enemy has a bad educational system. The kids are getting further left behind this year because of what you may or may have released by mistake. Oops. Um, but, hey, if you got really strong AI telling you what chess moves to make, some of these moves are like triple jumps. It's like, and we fucked up small businesses, and we fucked up their kids' education, and we we – we divided them, and everybody's depressed, and suicide rate is up, and people can't go to work, and they now they're more socialist because now they need a stimulus check, and it's like fucking check, fucking mate. Yeah. Because Eesh. if you think about it, yeah, it is. Because oh, if you think well, about it, and yeah. they hate their country, and they're not proud of their flag, yeah. and they call Chingo Bling a coconut sellout, even though he's trying to give them game, and I'm still Mexican Morpheus. Okay. Which one of y'all gonna be Neo? <laughs> Tell him how you really feel. <laughs> The only reason why I was thinking about this because I would love to to see when they do their star test, right? Where how they're going to test because of this. Some kids are not, you know, computer learners. You know, mm-hmm. they need to have that one on one with the teacher looking. Vis- they're visual, right? Um, and I get it, a computer is visual, but it's not. It's not the same when no. someone's talking to you, reading or whatever. Some kind of like maybe like recording that's already been playing or whatever. And also, I wonder in this in this short time that they've gone back to school, how many kids have already st- have have they've already reported for child abuse? Oh, I wonder because that's usually how they find child abuse. It's schools that report it to but, CPS. But Marisol, we have to keep everyone safe, and that's the thing we're gonna hide behind. That's the thing that we're gonna use safety, safety, and that's how they they grab in power, they fucking people over in the name of safety. Yeah, in the name of safety, everybody's lost all practicality. It's like you can't even talk in a practical term without offending somebody. And in every every like power grab in the past, every dictatorship, everything, 
uh, authoritative like that has always hid behind something that everyone can get behind. The greater like, good. It's for the kids. Yeah. We're doing this because the children. You know, we all got to do this now because because of this, because of that. And what they're using now is it's for safety. For safety, Rob. Like the people went on my Black Rifle uh, post, they're just like, uh, how dare you disrespect Starbucks for having everyone out there with the mask and you over here promoting and you part of the problem and, and you know, stick to comedy and stay in your lane and shut the fuck up. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, bad advice. <laughs> That's, that's the thing. I think someone left a little message on one of my posts. And um, the only reason why I saw it just recently is because someone else made a po- uh, made a comment asking like where they could find the shirt that I was, which is one of mine, mm-hmm. right? But they said, oh, I went on your website. Real cute. You carry you carry masks, right? It's like, who said we were anti-mask? And it's like, because yeah. your, your husband, um, your husband... Uh, what do you call it did a hashtag save the kids as if like basically as if saying like he didn't believe that the coronavirus is real I didn't want to go into it first of all Frank put those hashtags and they're assuming what they think yeah they mean so I didn't I didn't want to like go back and forth with her because there was no need I've just kind of stopped with people it's retarded it's yeah. just you're I just, have no time you're I'm assuming sorry. that we're anti-mask and then you're calling us hypocrites for selling masks yeah. When did I ever say I'm exactly. anti-mask? Exactly. So I said, uh, I was just real like this. I said, thanks for checking out my website. I was like, um. And you were her Murphy <laughs> I was like, I don't think anyone said this virus was fake. I was like, but whatever. They just, it's stereotypes. Yeah. They assume that if you got an American flag cup and you got a podcast named Red Pill Tamales, you don't fear and respect and you don't believe in coronavirus. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, because then someone chimed in talking about yeah, how does it feel to be lumped in with everybody else? I said, the way y'all said, lump us in. Yeah, and I was like, wait a minute. My whole post said, I don't give a F how you vote because I choose, I I judge people based on their character, how they treat me and how they treat others. I don't give yeah. a rat's ass which way you we vote. Don't, we don't go by color like, I'm only cool with brown people. Yeah, I don't give a damn. It's a lot you know of whole-ass brown people out so, there. So, exactly. <laughs> I don't want to be There's down There's a whole-ass people of every race. For you know sure. what I'm saying? So, it's like, okay. So, then I, I said, huh? I said, you must have not read my, my caption. And then she I said, said pull no, up. I said, did nobody say, uh, did nobody say uh, all Democrats? Were, I like went off and I was just like, anyway, I, I said, and I don't care which way you vote because I'm sure you're still a good person. They ain't got shit to say when you tell them that I'm sure you're, I'm sure the Democrats are good people. I'm not, no one's saying that they're bad people. You know what I'm it's saying? Just it's people just, people didn't want to vote that way. That's all. I can just go on. I want to do one whole of episode with you guys, seriously addressing all these feminists out there Ooh. on the Democrat side. And it needs to be a female on here because otherwise y'all know what they're going to say about Wait, y'all. the women or the dudes Ayo. that are feminists? The uh-huh. dude feminists or women feminists? Women. Oh, okay. I'm down. Just because I can't stand that um, AOC girl. I mm-hmm. can't. She gets on my damn nerves. I can't stand her. I can't. She was cool at the beginning. I was like, oh, she's what's up. Okay. She's okay. Latina. Okay, she's you Latina. Should bartend. She's a bartender. Yeah, she's girl. A, making okay. little videos okay. of her okay. dancing. Okay. okay. We might have somebody that can see a little bit of a point of view. Okay. She and might be down And then she just started doing young. stupid shit. And I was just like, But now she's a hermaphrodite. Yeah, oh, exactly. Hermaphrodite. <laughs> Got two holes she pees out of. She a hermurf. <laughs> Diarrhea of the mouth is what she has. I know, and it's Yo, just like uh, we we got to go pick up Penny. We got to sure. do dinner. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, we got, a, we got a big trip tomorrow. We got to finish. Packing. Yes, safe travels. Uh, this is episode thirteen, so this is gonna this is gonna be up for people. But uh, you know, then we're gonna see on the feed, um, and you'll get the the info of the Red Pill Tamales feed by this point. Uh, it, that you're only gonna get one of them, and then everybody else is, that's on the Patreon is gonna get the rest of the content. That's so the so the patrons that's get cool. all episodes, full episodes, bonus RSS feed. Uh, the regular folk that are just stopping by and aren't patrons, they're going to get uh episode. Well, yeah. And then the next one, they're just getting a piece. Yeah, just a trailer piece kind of. Over, it. Yeah, okay. Got it. Oh. All right, guys. That is episode number 13. We appreciate all the love and support. Shout out to the patrons. Hit us up. Patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. Burn, burn, burn. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> Por favor, believe it. Sass.